Here are three big mistakes that people are making when they're lure fishing. Are you one of these people? Hey! So today, I'll be doing my favorite kind of lure fishing, which is topwater lure fishing. This is a very exciting way to fish because you get to see the fish explode on your lure. And it really gets your adrenaline going. It's my favorite way to do it. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. And I'm also gonna be talking about the three different mistakes. So I found this spot on Fish Brain. It's located on the Potomac River. I'm not gonna say exactly where, but I'm gonna show you guys how I find these spots. First things first, get this app called Fish Brain. Fish Brain is an awesome app. It's really a good tool for me. That's my favorite part about this app, is that it's a great tool for me to find out what kind of fish are running in new areas. This app takes eight million users and maps out where all the fish that they've caught are located. Now, let me, let, let me clarify something. You don't have to post your spot. You don't have to what's called burn a spot. Um, you can keep it private as well and kind of just share your fishing pictures. It's really starting to turn into like an Instagram except with just fishing, and I really like it. There's this new feature with Fishbrain called Bite Time, where you can check literally what time is best to fish for these kind, certain kinds of fish. I checked the bite time for stripers here at the Potomac, and it said it's really good right at the, the uh, early morning. We've been here since sunrise. Let's get to it. Okay, mistake number one that I've, I've noticed is you're using the wrong lure in the wrong place. Let me clarify. Right now we are fishing in the Potomac area. This has a lot of rocky bottom structure and a lot of moving water. Now with rocky bottom structure and moving water, you're not gonna wanna throw something really heavy that sinks all the way to the bottom and gets stuck on those rocks and that current will push it into, into the rock, getting it stuck even more. Bad. You're using the wrong lure in the wrong place. In places with rocks and stuff like this, you're gonna to wanna to stay up, to, up towards the top column. If not, you're gonna to wanna to be very seasoned in jigging those rocks because it's not easy. And a lot of times, if the current is too fast, don't even bother. Mistake number two, you are fishing your lure way too fast and not giving the fish an opportunity, uh, a full opportunity to strike. Or maybe you're just fishing at the wrong speed. You could be fishing it way too slow or way too fast but I find that a slower retrieve often gets me more fish. And a fast, a, fa a retrieve that's too fast won't get me fish. So something you might think about doing is if you see fish chasing your lure and you see fish busting out there, slow it down a little bit. Give them a chance to eat it. And our final mistake, number three, is that you are simply not throwing that lure enough. Sometimes you could be doing everything perfectly, but the fish are simply not there you're not there at the right tide, something's going on with the moon. There's so many different factors that you have to take into account. All you need to do is have confidence in your lure. These lures work. They have been working. They're proven to work. You need to have confidence and stick with your game plan. Those are my three big tips. So now I'm gonna do some fishing with the top water right now. Aaron and I are gonna both show you exactly what we mean and uh, show you how to catch, really get on some fish. This one's actually a freshwater lure right here. I use this for, um, for smaller inshore stuff, and since I'm throwing this on a seven foot rod, I think this will be, this will be adequate. The, the, the stripers are chasing fish about this size right now. And uh, I think this will, be, this will work pretty well. So I'm gonna show you how to work uh, nice and slow. It's called walking the dog motion. That's a very important technique when using top water lures. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that right now. Okay, so now once you get to your spot, you're gonna to wanna to try and cover as much water as possible. Um, and a lot of times you'll see bait fish kind of scurrying at the surface. That's kind of what you wanna to cast towards. Um, otherwise, you're just casting and bringing it in and, and just searching. So give it a cast. And the way you wanna work this is real slow coming back. And I'm just twitching the tip. You see how I'm moving the tip? I'm slowly bringing in that slack too at the same time. And this is gonna make the head of the, the lure go left and right, left and right. When you see something attack it, you wanna slow it down. You can just completely stop it. And then the fish a lot of times will come up and hit it right after that. So I'm gonna start here, cast here, bring it back, cast there, bring it back, cast there, bring it back. 
That's there. And this way I'm going to be able to cover all the water. Rockfish, striped bass, they like to move. They like to move around. They're not usually in just one spot. So a lot of times it's more productive to search for them. And here's Aaron's lure. And she's using a spook. Look at how that thing moves through the water. It's, its head's going left and right, left and right. And she will probably be able to hit some fish right around here. This is a pocket right here. I'm standing on a rock out here. Uh, this is a deeper pocket right here. Holy crap, that was two on one at the same time. Heck yeah. There we go. Nice little summer schoolie. I think two of them hit at the same time. And I'm just fishing this really slow right at the top. You guys saw how I was fishing it, nice and slow. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna let you go. Woo! Okay, that was a decent sized striped bass, uh, especially for the middle of the summer like this. I told you before, this is a freshwater bass fishing lure. I don't think it could handle that last striper because it bent out the hook a little bit. Any bigger, I feared that it would have lost the fish. This spook is a freshwater spook as well. It's a super spook. Um, I, I've changed out the hooks to saltwater hooks and they're much bigger than normal. This will not bend out and I'm not afraid to lose a fish on this because I, I have confidence in these hooks. Whereas that, that other one, those thin gauged hooks, a, bit, a big 30 inch striper, a 40 inch striper will bend it out. Nice! I'm fishing right next to the camera right here. Oh my gosh. Hello. Just caught one. Woohoo. Hello. Yeah, you gotta slow it down. Like, real slow walk the dogs. Like, I mean, walk when you, like, I, I gotta get the cadence. Right. Bit it. Oh Bro, it's as soon as I slowed it down like you said. Got this on thing in the screen. Here we go. Nice. There it is. So, yeah. so that is our little crash course on lures and different mistakes people are making with lures. Hopefully you're able to take these tips and take this tutorial and really apply it to your own kind of fishing and your own fishing grounds. These tips I think apply to pretty much everyone who fishes lures. Here at Hay Skipper, our mission is to help as many fishermen learn how to fish as possible. We just wanna help you guys get on some fish. And we've written so many different eBooks and PDFs, online resources for you guys to read and learn from. If you wanna check it out, we've got all sorts of lesson plans right in the link in the description below. When you get these eBooks and you download these PDFs and online courses, you really help support this channel. I wanna let everyone know who has supported us before that you guys are very awesome. I love you guys so much. Thank you all for the support. Every penny that we make goes right back into the channel, right back to giving you guys more tips. So if you wanna support, help support us, check out our eBooks. Also, give us a follow on Fishbrain. Check out the kind of stuff we're posting on there. They're doing some pretty cool stuff with their app. I'll see you guys next week.